And the work at that time started to be connected to the space shuttle mission. Primarily vibration control, uh, whether it's different methods of passive control, active control, experimental work. And I worked in some of the historic sites over there, the places where they tested the Apollo vehicle before it was launched. So there were some Building 49 is a very famous building on the site uh, at Johnson Space Center. So I had an opportunity to interact with some of the people who have been involved with the program for many, many years. It was, uh, it was really a remarkable period for the United States, and for me it was really uh, an honor and, and really a privilege to be working with people who were really pushing the envelope of exploration, the envelope of engineering, discovering new materials, coming up with new systems, testing them on the ground, flying them in space, and learning more and more about how things are uh, involved. Uh, STS-63 was uh, the very first flight where the, uh, where the space shuttle did rendezvous operation or pre-docking operation, where they get into proximity of the space shuttle within 12, 15 meters and then they moved away to about 100 meters and they started circling the, the, uh, the Mir space station and to get a better feel of how actual docking would. Uh. Prior to, to that time, there were a number of studies done by various people involved to try to predict what's going to happen to the space shuttle and what's going to happen to uh, the Mir space station as the space shuttle approaches uh, the, the space station. The concern was, at least one of the concerns, and that's what part that I was involved in, is to look at what the stability of the Mir space station being powered by very flexible solar panels. Uh, my collection were four of them mounted. They are very huge, they are very t tall, and uh, very flexible, and they change locations. And as the space shuttle approaches the, uh, the space station and begins to slow down and adjust its uh, directions and uh, uh, location by firing small jets, will these small jets, go, uh, are they going to excite the panels and get them into vibration mode that can get into possibly an unstable, uncontrolled vibration? Because you're talking about two vehicles uh, that are in space. Nothing is anchored to anything, and they're both floating, they're both approaching, you know, one is approaching the other, and therefore, and they need to line up perfectly in order to establish docking and to establish a tunnel uh, to, to move goods and services and people between the two vehicles. That work, of course, involved mathematicians, uh, people with a background in physics, uh, space flights, and engineers, and technicians, and a whole bunch of people really to come to that conclusion. It was only a small part of what uh, was being done. The, uh, after the verification, then, the actual docking. That's when I was in the control room, sitting in a giant conference room uh, with tens and tens of US engineers. Uh, on the other side of the globe, the Russian engineers are sitting in their control room and, and the translation going back and forth and the excitement and the, the, you can just uh, feel the, 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 really the, the, the tense environment. Everybody is hoping for the best but also prepared to take care of any kind of uh, unfortunate event that may or may not may occur. Luckily nothing happened that's unfortunate. It was very successful. It was tested. It worked. Everybody was relieved. You can just see the, you know, you can hear the sighs of relief within in the room.